So hi and uh, welcome again. I decided to dedicate this video to stereo microscopes and I want to give you a more in-depth uh, look into stereo microscopes. I have one here. Um, yeah, that is uh, that's uh, one of them and uh, uh, there is a fundamental difference between these uh, stereo microscopes and the microscopes that I have standing over here on the side. Uh, stereo microscopes allow you to look at objects uh, that are opaque, that means uh, that are not uh, transparent. So if, you, for example, you would like to look at this uh, seashell, it's quite easy. You can simply place it on the stage of the stereo microscope and you can start um, observing. Um, and uh, this basically uh, means that uh, you can also um, get an upright image. Uh, so this means it's the way that you look Look, uh, through the eyepieces on the stereo microscope. That is the, exactly the same way that you uh, place the object on the on, on the stage. In the compound microscopes, it's uh, flipped around, uh, but it really doesn't matter uh, because the object, the original object, is so small anyway that you wouldn't even notice that it's actually upside down. Yeah, and in order to get uh, an upright image, uh, there are in a stereo microscope uh, there are prisms, and these prisms I've got some. Uh, yeah, some here. That's a prism. Okay, and, and as a matter of fact, there are two of them in in. Uh, yeah. Um, in each uh, for each uh, eye and what they these prisms do is, is they flip the image around uh, to give you an upright image okay and another thing that's really um, interesting about these stereo microscopes is is that um, because you have uh, two different objectives actually um, later on I'm going to show this to you uh, the, the two eyes will get a different picture and therefore you will actually get a real stereoscopic impression um, of the object that you see so it's quite quite spectacular um, so and this is basically um, yeah uh, I just want to show you now the different parts of a stereo microscope um, and uh, I hope that this also kind of helps you maybe in the decision process of whether you actually want to buy one of these uh, stereo microscopes. Okay, so now let's get started. Well, we've got, I think, around 10 of these uh, stereo microscopes. They're pretty high quality. Um, and uh, I'm going to do the following. I'm simply going to take one of them right now and I'm going to have a closer look um, at them. Um, there is no brand uh, printed on the microscope, uh, but uh, even though it is a no-name uh, microscope, the quality is, is, is quite high. And uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to show you how to switch it on. There is, of course, a main switch uh, on the back. And uh, there are two light intensity regulators. Uh, one is regulating light which comes from the top and the other one uh, from the bottom. This is actually something that's very common in, in most uh, stereo microscopes. So here right now is this is the lamp uh, from the top. It's epi illumination. And um, because uh, stereo microscopes are there to also observe opaque objects. These are non-transparent objects. So if you have a complete uh, sample, like I don't know, a small bug or a leaf or, or a rock sample, you can put it directly under the microscope and look at it directly. Yeah, and uh, that is now the lamp from the bottom. And uh, here there is a glass plate, and uh, I'm removing the clips now and the glass plate, and you can see that there is a lamp in here. Um, some of them have halogen lights, um, other have LED lights. Uh, I would say almost a little bit a question of taste, um, but uh, that is basically a very common feature. That is the focus, and as you can see, when you turn the focus a knob, uh, then the whole uh, head goes up and down. And uh, if the distance is still not uh, large enough, uh, then you can also uh, loosen a screw on the back and uh, simply move everything up and down yet further. Um, and uh, what you also can see is, is that on the knob there is the word tension written, uh, written on here. Uh, what does this mean? Um, you can uh, turn the two knobs count uh, against each other and this allows you to tighten um, the, the focus. So right now it's it's tightened, okay, and uh, you can focus uh, easily. Um, but if it is uh, too loose, uh, then there is a drift, a focus drift, and you can see that the, the whole head moves down on its own weight. Um, this is uh, yeah something that you have to uh, avoid doing, and therefore these microscopes allow you to tighten the focus by um, twisting the two focus knobs um, against each other, something that some people overlook sometimes. One of the things that I like about this microscope is that it has a zoom function. Um, and there is a knob here, uh, and uh, this knob allows you to zoom. Uh, and uh, one of the things is that stereo microscopes um, generally do not magnify as much. And so for this reason, um, you can actually have optics uh, that zoom without impacting on the resolution too much. 
this is what I just showed you, that is the eye distance, so this uh, adjusts for the eye distance. That uh, because uh, there are prisms in uh, the stereo microscope uh, which turn the image up right and yeah. So that is uh, the zoom function, so I'm kind of uh, yeah turning this and you can actually see that uh, on the outside there is not a big uh, change because all of the optics they move inside. 4.5 multiplied by uh, 10, which is uh, the magnification of the eyepiece, gives you a total magnification of 45. Okay, so you, this is a 10 times uh, eyepiece. Um, it says your wild field, WF means for wild, wide field 10 times. And uh, then uh, you can also say that there is uh, the number 22 written um, at the end. And this basically uh, tells you how much you're able to see of the object. And it's for eyeglasses. This means you can look through the... Um, eyepieces using your eyeglasses on. This is now where I'm demonstrating the zoom function. I simply put a, a two euro coin under the microscope. Um, it was a little dif difficult holding the, the mobile phone camera in front of the eyepiece, but uh, um, I hope you get the idea. And as you zoom in and out, um, you might lose the focus a little bit, but that is completely normal. You just refocus, but generally it stays in focus quite well. Okay, yeah, so I have to refocus right now again. And the dark shadows that you see on the lower uh, left side and on the bottom, it's because uh, I did not uh, hold the camera at the, uh, at the correct distance. So it's simply a, yeah, a technical thing that I've not done quite right. Yeah, so I'm focusing right now. You can see the, the edge of the coin. Yeah. Um, the camera also tries to adjust the focus and I'm zooming out again. It's, that's one of the nice things that adds a lot to the visual impression, the, the ability to focus. Here I'm placing a 10. Uh, cent uh, coin and yeah simply also to demonstrate the same thing okay so that is uh, basically the, the demonstration of uh, of the zoom function now let's uh, tip uh, the microscope over and let's have a look um, on how this actually looks uh, from the bottom um, you can see that uh, the objective of the stereo microscope in reality is two objectives uh, one for each eye because you, in order to get a stereoscopic view, you need to get two different pictures, one uh, picture for each eye. Yeah, and so that is basically, I completely detached the whole thing and I'm now showing you what you can see if you look at, uh, at it from the bottom. You can see that there is some, me some mechanics and there are also some lens elements moving back and forth uh, to provide the continuous zoom function. Yeah, so that is basically, uh, the, the way that it works and uh, because of the lens elements moving back and forth, this is also the reason why there's a little bit of a focus drift. But uh, that is really, uh, you can almost forget about this because it's uh, uh, so small, so you just have to refocus again. Yeah. Yeah, so that you can see all of the gearing and the mechanics. And uh, here I'm just putting up a low cost uh, stereo microscope uh, on the left. And the, on the one, the one on the right is the one that I just looked at. And what I want to do now is I just want to compare the high and the low uh, cost one because this is the low cost one. And you also have two magnifications, 2x and 4x. And you can see now that there are uh, basically, yeah, also objectives in here. In this case, uh, you have to um, exchange the objectives by rotating uh, the whole uh, part around, yeah. And... Uh, that's basically how you change magnification. That's again demonstration of the focus and you can see the focus knob of the smaller low cost stereo microscope uh, it's, it just works the same way. So in design and in principle it's pretty much uh, both of them are the same. 10x magnification and here you have a, a field view of 20 so you see slightly less uh, so it's, but uh, it's almost almost the same really. Yeah, and uh, here we look at again same magnification and uh, it's uh, you see a little bit more, so the, it's less of a tunnel view, the larger the, the, the number. Yeah, so now let's have a look here. I put a, a bill, a money bill, under the low cost and the high cost uh, microscope. That's what you see here. Um, using uh, the same magnification, I used uh, 20x in both cases. Now that's uh, the 10 euro bill under the more expensive one. And actually you can see that it looks pretty much the same. Um, so concerning optical quality, there's not much difference, but you can see that the diameter of the eyepiece is different. And it is also like this that uh, the low cost microscope um, also 
um, has the diameter of the objectives is a little bit smaller uh, than the one of uh, the more expensive microscope and this also means that uh, the more expensive microscope um, allows more light uh, to go through and this means that you can also do stereo microscopy without actually always having to use artificial lighting because the diameter is simply a little bit larger so, and I think uh, this uh, should have given you a basic uh, overview um, of uh, stereo microscopes and uh, let's go back now, back home to my own lab. I hope uh, that the video was uh, interesting uh, for you and uh, I want to simply also say that uh, if you're really interested in amateur microscopy and if you actually think about buying a microscope, I think sooner or later you might be thinking about having both types of microscope uh, uh, at home, stereo microscopes and the, the compound microscopes, because both of them actually have their own world uh, to look at. Okay, There are certain objects that are simply better seen in a stereo microscope and there are certain objects that are simply better seen in a compound microscope. If you have very young children that you want to um, yeah, do a little bit of microscopy with, then I probably would uh, recommend, co recommend uh, stereo microscopes because it's uh, simply much easier to use them. You do not have to do any complicated specimen preparation or anything like that. Um, but if the child is a little bit older and if uh, laboratory work or easy laboratory work is already also something that you want to do, like specimen preparation, observing water samples and putting a drop of water on a slide and so on, so if you also want to get involved in that, in this case, then I would uh, recommend uh, the, uh, the, the compound microscopes. Okay, um, this was it. I wish all of you happy microbe hunting, all the best, and bye-bye, and see you again.